What's up everyone? It's Lorraine and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a massive, huge, insane houseplant haul that I have been going shopping for for the past two days. Um, I kind of justify this because I submitted my application for dental school, so yay me! If you're new here, definitely go click that subscribe button. It means so much to me receiving all your support from the plant community and I can't wait to make some more videos about this. So let's get to it. The first plant is one of my absolutely favorite plants that I've ever bought this week. And this one has been on my wish list for so long after I've gotten so into Hoyas. I really love their succulent-like texture and these leaves that are so beautiful. So here it is. It is the Hoya Carii variegated album marginata. So this plant is just absolutely stunning. As you can see, there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 10 leaves, and this is the small leaf that's coming out, and there's two at the top here. Um, from my understanding, Hoyas like to dry com out completely before watering, so make sure that um, you stick your finger in and to see if it's doing well. Hoyas like these, especially the album marginata ones, grow tend to be very slow. I will be definitely keeping this by my work desk and seeing how this plant grows, I've understood that it does grow pretty slowly, especially the album marginata vraga kind. So if you have any care tips, please let me know and comment down below. The next plant we have here is this Swedish variegated ivy. It is such a stunner as you can see these white tips on the ends of the leaves and look how luscious and full this plant is. So this was actually um, in one of the sales. It was get two plants and buy one free. So it actually came out to $1.50, which is an amazing deal. So from my understanding, um, this leaves the, this plant likes to be heat tolerant. It's adaptable to the house, so I would probably pot this up into a clay pot and see how it does indoors. And it's, um, it says deadheading is not necessary. Um, it likes full sun, part sun, and full shade, which is very, very nice for indoors. And I just love how these leaves are so unique to any type of ivy I've seen. This next plant was also included in the buy two and get one free special. It is this absolutely stunning little plant. And I really love the dark purple foliage. And as you can see, the shape is unlike any others. It's almost like a Canadian leaf, but more protruding on some of the sides, which is very stunning. Um, I believe this might be an outdoor plant. It could be for um, bedding or something that's a filler plant when you put them in large decorated pots. So please let me know if you know what this is called. It's absolutely stunning and the new leaves come out as this light green shade and then somehow turns into this very dark purple. Next on this list is something called the Vinsa Vine. It looks like this and what drew me to this plant was the um, variegation in the center of the leaves. It's quite subtle but also very stunning if you look very close to it. Wow, that's beautiful. So this Vinsa vine, it's trailing, it's got long stems that are covered with broad oval variegated or solid green leaves and it does have these lavender flowers that do bloom in the spring so I'm happy to see um, what this will look like. And these are excellent trailers for hanging baskets and containers as well as ground coverings. But what I'm thinking of doing is repotting this into a circular pot and hanging it by my windowsill. I just love these trailing little pieces that come out. And it, do ha it does have a lot of new growth from the center of the soil. So I am happy to see what this looks like. And if you have any experience with this, please let me know. And here we have this unknown plant. What drew me to it was 
the undersides of the leaves is um, pink and purple, so it was it is variegated. What I believe this plant is called is Anacomperosis rufescens variegata, but I am not sure if this is exactly what it's called. This is a succulent, so it does like to dry up between waterings, and ever since I got it, it I received it in a three and a half inch pot, but um, placed it in a bigger pot like this, and it grew the next day like 50% larger. I'm not kidding. And um, I was just so surprised. It grew like in width and height. So this is such a stunner if you're a beginning for succulents. Um, I do recommend this one. So the next plant we have here is this beautiful Ripsalis. As you can see, it's almost got like this branching, like a, like a, almost like a pine cone tree that's um, unique and um, something I've never seen before. It's usually for the Ripsalis genus. I've seen them almost like, almost more like a bush, but this one seems to be, um, all the sticks seem to be growing upwards. Um, what I really liked about this plant is um, it's epiphytic flowering and it's also in the cactus family so you do not need to water as much as um, some of the other plants. It likes to dry in between waterings and can tolerate some um, dry periods if um, that's in your environment. And it's also called a mistletoe cactus because of these little ball flowers that grow out and bloom into this beautiful um, white and very spring-like flower. And here we have another succulent. Um, this was also $3.99 like the last one. And it does have these flower spikes that are coming out on the tops of each stalk. I do not know what this is called, but it did remind me of the Buddhist temple that um, some of the other YouTubers have been talking about, but I don't believe this is what it is. Um, I just really like how these leaves were very thick and unique to any other succulent I have. Next off in the haul is this thing. It is called a lemon cypress. So it says, touch the foliage and smell the fragrance. And it does smell like almost like this synthetic lemon. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it, but um, it is just absolutely stunning. It says um, it receives full sun or to partial shade, water regularly, fertilize every now and then, and prune to maintain this dwarf habit and promote new growth. Lemon scented, must keep frost free. This is such a cool plant. I really like this lime green texture to it, and it is so soft when you touch it. Um, yeah, so these are all the new growth tips, and it seems to be doing really happy in my environment. I keep it um, on top of my piano for decoration, and it seems to be doing really well. Next on this list is known as the Tradescantia Munich, and my mother bought this for me, and it has this purple variegation between the green striping and the underside of the leaves is also purple like the other Tradescantias that we regularly see at the big box stores and the grocery stores. So this is a relatively new cross and it has, um, it, it was created from two cross pollinations of seedlings of the Tradescantia albiflora. It's patented plant in the United States. So, um, this plant was first developed in the Netherlands in 2012, and through plant breeding, it says that um, we get impressive flowers with highly dependable performance. I've never seen flowers of this plant, and I'm excited to see what it looks like. It does have four stalks, and maybe I'll cut it down to make some more, but um, we'll have to see how that goes. Here we have an outdoor plant. It is a canna. This is yellow form. You can see that it is developing bullets that are about to bloom soon. And there are three stalks in here. 
this was such a great deal for buying a plant because it was $1.99 at my local nursery called Colasantes Tropical Farms. As you can see, it is quite huge, and I'm thinking of placing this in a, um, a large pot to see how big it grows. Next in the haul is this hibiscus. It's, I think it's a yellow or purple, purple or pink um, flower, but I am not sure what it is. This plant was 99 cents, and I did purchase two of these. Um, every time I do buy these though, they seem to somehow die, so if you have any care tips on how to better keep this alive for more than a year, um, please let me know and comment down below. Um, one of the second last plants that we have here is this huge um, plant. It's called the Kong Collius, and it comes in a six inch pot. This is a plant that I've never seen before. It has so many colors. It's got green, this dark red, like this pink texture, and yellow. Um, it does have these very thick stalks, and it has about three of them. And oh, it does have this bloom stalk coming out. Um, this plant is absolutely stunning. I'm not sure how to take care of it, I don't know anything about it. So, if you have any experience, also please comment down below. And I did save the best for last. This is my massive Monstera deliciosa that I got from Colasantes Tropical Gardens. This was $27.99, so it was a steal. Usually these plants come out for like $50 to $80 at my local nurseries, and I just absolutely love it. As you can see, um, the mature forms have almost like this ribboning on the stems before the leaves and it does have some fenestrations. It has some new leaves and yeah, I'm so happy with this plant. So that is it for our houseplant haul. I did get all of these plants in the past two days after going to two nurseries. I did go to a few more. I went to, the places I went to was Colasanchi's Tropical Gardens in Leamington. I went to London Humans after seeing a video um, from Lulu Leaves, Lulu's Leaves, so thank you for that. I went to Canadales, and I think that was pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below and give this video a like. It means so much to me seeing all your support, and I cannot wait to make all the new videos that are to come in the future. So thank you so much, and as always, happy growing. Peace.